another AliExpress module I bought for our entertainment. So this is basically speaking, it's a passive infrared detector that turns on lights and you drill a hole in a ceiling or a panel or whatever, you stuff this through, put a lock nut in the back of it and then use this connector to hook up. And it has two wires for the feed, 120 or 240 volt, and then the two wires go to the load with the neutral looping through and then the switched live. So I'm going to... Uh, Set this up as a little demo and we'll give it a test. How am I going to do that? Because I can't do it with the bench light, so I'm going to have to do it in the dark because this thing does suppose to have a light sensor, right? Okay, I shall work on this. One moment, please. Okay, I have made this set up. I don't think the light's at a high enough level. It's going to stop it triggering. Let's put my hand in front and see if it detects the movement in the vicinity. It has. It's brought in the fairy lights to show that it's working. And it will stay on for approximately 20 seconds. And I don't know, does it trigger again in that time? Let's try that. Or does it... Uh, by, let's count. Uh, right, I, I won't count while the video's running because that'd be 20 seconds of boredom. So I'll tell you when the lights come back uh, if it worked. So watch your eyes, the light is coming back. And the answer is, yes, it does re-trigger. It starts that 20 seconds every time it detects movement. You don't seem to have any control over that, though. You can't extend the timer longer. Okay, righty-o, I shall uh, disconnect this stuff, get it out the way. I just use fair lights as a load. It was the only thing I've got that's a typical tungsteny load. I should test it with other loads. But anyway, I test it with these loads. Maybe I'll test it with other loads later. Righty here, let's explore. I got two. I've just had that other connector for that. There was no choice but to get two. It came as a pack of two. Lovely. Where is my spudger? There's the spudger. Let's see if I can spudge this apart. And we'll take a look at the circuitry inside. So I'll get that off. It's not needed. Is this going to come apart? Easily, yes, it is going to come apart easily. The spudger has yielded instant results. What well, it has definitely yielded instant results. Okay, let's zoom down. Not you're going to see an awful lot at the moment. Let's hinge this up. This component is that going to be a thyristor or a MOSFET, even shunting a bridge right far. It's a C106D. It's a thyristor shunting a bridge rectifier. I'll tell you what, I shall take a picture of this. I'll probably have to separate the circuit boards for this. Might have to remove the pass and thread sensor as well because it's blocking access to the components underneath. But I shall um, take a photo of these and we can explore the circuitry and I'll reverse engineer it. One moment, please. Reverse engineering is complete. Let's explore. I'll zoom down this. This is what I had to do to get this apart. I had to take the pass infrared detector off. I had to take the thyristor off to get a decent picture and separate the circuit boards. It was fairly complex, but that's okay. The circuitry itself is not complex. Let's zoom down in this. We have a couple of things of note. The Power supply is derived between live and neutral. It doesn't really matter if it's totally live, neutral, earth. It's going to find whichever of these connections you connected it to, it find its way through the, the rectifier. But the actual neutral is connected to this diode here and this current limiting resistor here, which then forms a power supply between there and the negative of that bridge rectifier with a Zener diode and a capacitor. And then there's a 3.3 volt regulator feeding up to the circuitry over there. Uh, the bridge rectifier is effectively shunted by this mo uh, mo a MOSFET. It's not a MOSFET, it's a thyristor, the C106D. Very classic sensitive gate thyristor, typically about, well, about 0.2 milliamps, 200 microamps for the gate. I'm not sure that will go with the value of the resistors, but it's obviously triggering it. There is a 10k pull-down resistor for the gate there. The 3.3 volts goes across here. There is another little, another little filtering capacitor. And then there is the pass infrared detector mounted between these three points. There's the light sensor, which is forming a potential divider with this resistor and feeding input. Plus, there are two other potential dividers, these two resistors here and uh, these two resistors here, which are basically 
setting thresholds. They could be adjusted theoretically, but access to them is extremely limited and it's super micro tiny resistors, not even readable or measurable in circuit. There's a 10k resistor going to the gate of the thyristor and there's a little bit of filtering from the output of the passive infrared detector. Okay, I could not identify this chip. I found loads of PIR chips that have the functionality and these dividers, but not with a pinout where pin 2 is positive and pin 4 is negative. It was a bit odd. Anyway, let's look at the schematic. That's what you're here for. The guts laid bare. Here is the live and the neutral powering the unit. There's the load. The reason they're using a bridge rect far with a thyristor across it, shunting it out, is simply because thyristors have much more sensitive gates. They're a much simpler component to turn on than a triac. So in this instance, they're just using that as a self-latching, easy-to-trigger component that goes across the uh, bridge rect far. And when it shunts it out, because the, the thyristor is just capable of switching DC, it's on the DC, DC side, but on the AC side, it just sees the AC being switched. Very clever. 10k uh, drive resistor and 10k pull down resistor. Um, the power supply is through this diode, a 100k resistor, which will get fairly hot ish on 240 volts, but they've made it universal voltage. There's kind of a way around that without opening it, but if you did open it, you could change this resistor here for a higher value in the UK or European countries, anywhere you've got above 200 volts, because this resistor here is going to get. Fairly hard. That's why it's a big resistor. They've just sized it for anything from 100 to 240 volts, and it just means it's dissipating a shed load more power at 240 volts. There is a 5.6 volt zener. That's a guesstimate. I put an external supply across, turned the voltage up, and as it crept around about 5.4 uh, volts, it started passing current. Closest value to that is about 5.6 volts. There's a little capacitor. There's a 100 ohm resistor then feeding the 3.3 volt regulator. Oh, they've used a 100 ohm resistor. It's not going to see a huge amount of current being switched on the other side. It's not dissipating a lot. I don't know why they've done that. Maybe it's not even necessarily stability. You'd expect another capacitor on the other side. Don't know. Anyway, there is another capacitor on this output side of that 3.3 volt regulator. There's a passive infrared detector with its connection to the 3.3 volt rail, a bit of filtering, and then it's going into mystery chip. The mystery chip actually has three potential dividers. I've only drawn one just because I ran out of room on the paper. Otherwise, I, I didn't want to squish this thing up really tightly. But there are three potential dividers. One is the uh, photodiode and a resistor to set the point that it's going to switch on. Let me just point that out on the drawing the photodiode and its resistor and the other ones which are just two resistors are used to select the sensitivity of the passive infrared detector and also the time delay but they've just chosen those values for 20 second um, and it does re-trigger but that's more or less it there's not really much else to say it's very small it works i'm a bit surprised at the high value I mean, I know the whole thing works at low current, but I'm surprised at the high value of that 10k resistor. I thought that would have been lower. Um, and uh, there's not really much else to say. It's a very simple circuit. It could do with the improvement in the 200 plus volt countries of that resistor. They are just being raised in value just to keep the dissipation down. There is a way you could get around that. Because the two neutral wires that come onto the circuit board, that's these two here, are common together. And because they're feeding that diode and resistor, you could theoretically reduce dissipation. If it turned out to be a problem, you could cut the wires here, uh, strip them and twist them together, and then just put another 100k resistor in here, and that would half the dis more than half the dissipation of the resistor. I think it would quarter the power dissipation. But uh, that would fix it. Just a resistor in here and then sleeving put over. But that's just a, a hack. It's just what you could do if you had the knowledge. Or you could just get a better quality PIR sensor, to be fair. But that is it, the AliExpress PIR sensors. I shall put a link to them uh, in the description, just in case you want to play about with them, because they're quite novel, quite fun little devices.